<laughs> All right. So yeah, just let me tell you a little bit of what I know about sunblock. And um, yeah, sunblock is a really neat thing. Uh, so I'm big on uh, wellness and prevention, right? And that's not better conveyed. No, and that's that's typically that it's at, at the, aptly conveyed by um, sunblock, right? Because it's wellness and it's prevention. It prevents skin cancer, right? Um, I, think I heard uh, that like half of the population will get skin, will get cancer at some point in their life, right? Which was surprising, but then you consider that some of that is not skin cancer, you know, which is almost completely curable. But there are some serious sites, it's a problem, you don't want to deal with it. Um, and uh, so yeah, wearing sunblock prevents skin cancer, but also, and this is why more people uh, are starting to wear it actually, it's known to prevent wrinkles, loosening of the skin, the tough leathery skin that happens in old age. I mean, um, some of you may not be so interested in the physical aspect of, of life or, or maybe that weight waxes and wanes. I, I know like it has in my, in my own time, but um, I don't know things change over the course of your life and you don't want to be an old person and say, I wish I had done differently. That's all I can say about that is that you don't want to make any permanent, permanent decisions you know, that you can't change. And that's one of them, having a tough blood, dirty skin, wrinkly, and all that. Plus, that, that causes cancer. So um, these things are known. It's the ultraviolet rays that uh, increase the cross-linking of the collagen. And um, it has several biochemical changes that are known. This is uh, definitive proof. It's in all the makeups now, sunblock of some, um, some kind. And it's because of this evidence base they have for sunblock. Um, so first of all, how does sunblock work? Well. Essentially, all it tries to do is it tries to emulate melanin, which is the natural uh, pigment of your skin. And how melanin works is it absorbs the ultraviolet rays right from the sun. And uh, melanin, it stores that energy in its bonds and it vibrates and it dissipates that energy as heat. So heat is less harmful or not harmful to your body, whereas ultraviolet rays mutate the DNA and cause uh, you know, genetic changes leading to cancer. And that also causes some of the biochemical changes. Right? So sunblock. How does it work? That's all it tries to do. They're the molecules that you apply to your skin, and they do the exact same thing as mel that melanin tries to do, right? They absorb the ultraviolet rays in their bonds, they shake, they vibrate a little bit, and then they dissipate it as heat. That's, that's the basis for sunblock. So just a few things that you have to know about sunblock. Um, basic uh, SPF is a common measure of sun protection factor. <laughs> that's uh, all, all the ways you measure that, they're typically variations of uh, what I think is the original way to measure it, or, or one of the original ways. So it's just, they would take a piece of uh, pig skin in a laboratory and shine a lamp, right, that had the right uh, um, frequencies of ultraviolet radiation, and they would shine it at the pig, piece of pig skin in time, how long it takes it for it to burn, then apply the ointment, right, that's the sunscreen, and then they would time how long it takes to burn. Right, so an SPF 15 takes 15 times as long for the pig skin to burn than without anything. Right, that's how um, sun. That's essentially how so that, what SPF means. And um, so I told you about what that melanin sort of has some sun protection, right? So actually, um, you can actually ask the question, what is the SPF of certain skin types? So I, I looked up uh, this a while ago, and I still see varying numbers. But I just read in the in the outdoor handbook of wilderness medicine that a deep dark tan uh, has an SPF of only two. So the, pe the people who are, say, naturally light skinned get a dark tan. Um, it is, uh, the, the book said even the most tan skin is only an SPF of two. Now people uh, like me, I looked into this, I have a natural SPF of five uh, Indian, right? I saw some African Americans, they have an SPF of seven, and the really dark, uh, the darker African American population, they have an SPF of 13, and I remember when I was shadowing in the emergency room, I saw this six-year-old, and she really didn't look 60 years old. And um, I was just so astonished that she didn't have any wrinkles, because I was seeing other six-year-olds come in, and, and of course they had many more lines. So I asked the physician, it would be all right if I went back into the room and uh, asked her you know, what she uses on her skin. I was just so impressed. And uh, she, so she came back in, and I asked her, like, I'm sorry, you know, uh, to ask this question, but what do you use on your skin? Because it's so smooth, there's not like a single wrinkle. And she, they just laughed me out of the room. Her husband thought I was flirting with her, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and, and then it started, so, uh, but I was really impressed. And um, so, so yeah, in some skin types, you have natural SPF. Uh, I know what she used. She, she said nothing. She told me nothing, actually. 
I was I, I didn't believe her at first, and um, but no, I was really impressed. But one thing that's interesting is that dry skin, uh, right? They always tell you keep your your skin moisturized too to prevent the quality, to, to promote the good texture and quality. But actually, I read in the outdoor handbook um, that it's like the outdoor medicine wilderness handbook. But um, yeah, it said actually dry skin is better at scattering and reflecting the UV rays. And moisturized skin, it allows it to penetrate, the, the rays to penetrate deeper into your skin. I thought that was very interesting. That's also partly why, um, you know, swimming, you're, you're, off, you're out to get burned. Uh, the UV rays do penetrate two feet into the water. That was also a book. And, the, and then the surface of the water can reflect anywhere between zero and 100%, depending on the, the time of day and the setting. Um, so you're actually getting quite a bit, and remember it is moisturized skin. So if you do use moisturizer, use ones with sunblock, right? Because um, moisturized skin actually lets the rays penetrate deeper. Also, um, yeah, so I thought that was an interesting fact. Yeah. Uh, so what? So now that uh, you're interested in sunblock, what are the different kinds if you're gonna go out there and buy them? Uh, so there are two types, two general classes of sunblocks. There's uh, the chemical sunblocks. Um, those are typically, they're all variations of uh, the benzones. Avobenzone, oxybenzone, they all have uh, these benzone rings in them, that, you know, usually a few. Um, that's a picture of oxybenzone, actually. And they're, they're coming out with new products, Octino, Axolay, and I really haven't looked into those, but um, the, this is still true. There's only chemical sunblocks and physical blockers. And the physical blockers are zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. So the chemical sunblocks, and, and now they have two different uh, properties. So the chemical block sunblocks are generally the waterproof sunblocks. They're the ones who penetrate into your skin. The physical sunblocks, they just stay on the outside of your skin, right? These are, and um, yeah, they, they stay on the outside. Now, the interesting thing is that titanium dioxide is the chemical that you add when you want to lighten anything, right? And it's, it's amazing, it's the whitest material that we know, actually, the whitest pigment. So naturally, when you put it in sunblock, it tints your skin um, a little bit whiter. And so for some people, that's a problem. But if you get the right one, and you apply a small, a small enough layer, that shouldn't be a problem. I can tell you that I'm actually biased towards the physical blockers. Um, my dermatologist recommended the physical blockers of the chemical blockers. And I can tell you why for a couple of reasons. So the chemical blockers, when they absorb the UV radiation in their bonds, they actually get destroyed a little bit. Um, the, the, the molecule changes. That's why you have to reapply every two hours. Now the good thing is that it does penetrate to the deeper layers. And so it, it's the, typically the waterproof sunblocks that can uh, uh, you know, resist sweat and, 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 and swimming a little better. Whereas the physical blockers, as soon as you wipe those off of your skin, they're gone. But the physical blockers, as long as they're on your skin, they're protecting you. A lot of the physical blockers, they say um, daily use, right? You only have to apply it once. You don't, have, you don't typically have to reapply um, the physical blocker. It will be on there. They, of course, they recommend that you uh, reapply just because, for, right, what, what is SPF? It prolongs the time it takes for you to get burned by, by a factor of, say, 15, if it's SPF 15. So if it takes you 15 minutes to get burned, SPF 15, that's 225 minutes. If you're out for longer than 225 minutes, you better do something, right? Because you still get burned. So that's why they're going to reapply. But as long as the physical blockers, they are good for the entire day. You know, they're, they're, um, they don't, their the molecules don't break down so quickly as the chemical blockers. And they don't get absorbed in your skin. And that's also important. I've read a report that said that chemical blockers, they, uh, since, since they're in the deeper layers of your skin, right? A chemical blocker, or a sunblock, what does it do? It absorbs UV energy and, trans and turns it into heat, right? So the heat is in the deeper layers of your skin in a chemical block blocker, and that has been associated with some amounts of increased aging, right? Just the fact that it, it deposits the heat into the deeper layers. So the physical blockers, they stay on the outside, they don't get absorbed, you're not putting those chemicals um, in the deeper layers, and uh, again, they last all day. The only thing is they make you a little bit lighter, uh, they can give you a whitish tint you apply too much or one that's too thick. So, um, but you often, to creams that have them are tinted, you can also just apply a, a smaller layer and, and you should be fine. So.